everyone. I'm here with David Wright. Thanks for being here, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. David is at uh, Fitness for 10 in Carson City, Nevada, in our little studio there. So if you guys are in the area, go say hi to him. So I want to talk about, and I want to do a series, and I want you to help me find some people in the gym. Because, I mean, this is something that it's like it almost makes me emotional because I love the gym. And I just love the culture. And I, I, I can't encourage people enough. That's why I want to get their stories. And I want to get some people, you know, sitting in that studio that you're at to tell their story. And these are the type of people that I'm looking for. First of all, someone who is obese and they come in the gym for the first time, they have no idea how inspiring they are. But what they're thinking is, I'm going to get called names. People are looking at me. Um, I'm going to be disrespected. Uh, I'm going to be shamed. No, it's the opposite of that. Because when you're the first one to do that, if you're obese and you come in the gym and you're trying and you're there, you're inspiring other people who are overweight to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And those people that are in, we're going to talk about the guy in the wheelchair and David Fatino a little bit. They don't know the positive impact that they are having. All they're thinking about is everyone's looking at me. I'm fat. I don't belong here. And it couldn't be more opposite of that because people are seeing you and if they're judging you in the gym where it's a positive culture, they're judging you completely opposite of what you think. So your, your first thoughts on that, David. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. One of the things when, when I started at the gym and keep in mind when I started in gosh, 2012, so 12 years ago now, um, I had the opposite problem. So I, had lost a whole bunch of weight and, you know, it wasn't because I worked out extreme. It was more budgetary reasons, you know, lack of money and that type of thing. So I ate a lot less. Well, going into the gym, skinny as a twig. Now you, you have folks that'll come in who are, you know, severely overweight or they might be very, very underweight. And so those same feelings that people have when they're like contemplating even coming into a gym to even find out about, you know, our memberships or our programs here, um, they're going to have the same thing. People are going to be looking at me, um, judging me. I don't know if I can handle that kind of, you know, societal pressure that's going to be in the gym because everybody's a, a, you know, super fit, you know, muscle man or woman in the gym and they're all going to stare at me. Well, you know, it's, I've come to know in the last 12 years and then, you know, the last nine years as a competitor, like it's completely different than that. So for me, the thing that I like to kind of tell people who are considering the gym and have that concern or who come see me as a personal trainer and have that concern is nobody's looking at you or judging you in that way. A lot of times, if you're severely underweight, you're overweight, whatever the case might be, maybe you have a disability of some sort or an impairment of some sort and you're in here, you have no idea how people who... You know, you might not think you're inspiring, but you are. I mean, I have I have yeah. people not only in this gym, but in other gyms that I have gone to and still go to that I'm like, wow, you know, that person's in here as much as I am or so it seems like, you know, and they're constantly here and they're constantly working hard. And so it's like they're they're doing something about whatever their circumstance is in life um, health wise. They're in here doing something about it. And, and that's inspiring to a lot of people. Whether you think that or not, that's really what's happening. Yeah, and it's um, it's absolutely amazing. We can talk about the guy that you know we've talked about in the wheelchair, and I, I talked to him last week because I've been watching him for years, paralyzed from the middle of his back down. And he'd come in; he'd always comes in in his wheelchair, and people would have to hold the door for him to get into the gym. And you know, he would ask for help. Um, Hey, can you hand me that weight <laughs> or hand me that bar or I can't reach the cable. Um, and everyone stops and helps them now. Wow. 
what I saw him doing this last week, I had to stop him and just go, bro, you're working your ass off. And he said, it's invigorating. He goes, I'm going to walk again. I said, hell yeah, you are. You know, and what I saw him doing was he was on a recumbent bike, pushing that seat up closer and closer and getting more and more resistance and pushing that with his legs. And I've also seen him get on the Smith machine and hold the bar and do body squats. Mm -hmm. He is moving his legs. He is getting out of his wheelchair. And he used that word. It's invigorating. Very cool. Yeah, I, I like that. And it's same I've seen that same member here. And yeah, he, he does a lot. He's in here all the time, works really, really hard. And I think that's something that kind of, you know, gives people a little pause to come into the gym, regardless of what might be holding them back is how hard is it going to be for me for whatever my circumstances. Um, and, and that could be, you know, losing weight and body fat or you know gaining some mass if you're really really thin or something like that whether it's due to medical condition or due to your diet or whatever or you have a a disability of some sort people look at that and they say it's going to be really really hard and they don't know um, that there are people here to support you whether it's a personal trainer like myself or just people to your point steve where member other members here in the gym if you ask for help you know they're probably going to say, oh yeah, sure, I'll grab that dumbbell or yeah, you know, let me grab that cable for you or let me help you put your feet on the the recumbent bike pedals and, you know, make sure you're secure. Like people will do that. Um, And and I know, you know, for people like myself, for instance, I know that, you know, as a fairly introverted individual, most of my life, I probably wouldn't have wanted to ask anybody for help. Nowadays, if I needed it, absolutely. I'm going to be like, hey, can you help me with such and such? But, you know, for people who aren't quite there, it's one of those things you just have to understand that it's not as an intimidating environment as you might think or hear online or those types of things. Come in and see for yourself, whether it's fitness for 10 or anywhere, um, get out of your house, get off the couch, you know, get out of that familiar setting. And I'm not saying, you know, thrust yourself into something you're completely uncomfortable with, but become comfortable, you know, come in, take a look at our gym in particular here or any of our clubs and in, in Reno Sparks, you know, you can, you can go in, people are friendly, you know, you can take a look, you know, get kind of a tour of the facility, kind of understand what, what things are, and then work with your trainer for your free intro and, you know, go through some workouts, you know, that's free as a member, you know, fitness for 10. And so those types of things are there to help people feel comfortable and help them understand. And so when those folks come in that absolutely are just terrified of being in a gym or in a public setting where, you know, they feel out of place, they have to understand that they're, they're actually in the right place. This is where they belong. Um, but it takes them coming in to understand that. So, yeah, I, I can tell you right now, there's, there's a lot of people that feel that way, but when you do overcome that barrier, just taking that first step of coming in here, um, that's one of the most important things. And it does inspire others, whether you know it or whether you don't, I've had people, you know, when I'm, doing my fitness journey stuff on, on Instagram, Facebook, that kind of thing have come out to me and said, gosh, you know what? I've been watching you for two years, three years, five years, and your journey inspires me. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know they, you know, I mean, I'm not going to like every time or whatever. And I don't do it for the likes. I do it really for me so I can keep track, but they're like, you've inspired me for five years. I love watching your journey. I'm going, I didn't even know you were watching, but those are the types of things, even your own journey, people might be watching going, you know what? They can do that. I can do that. So you can inspire those people without even knowing. Yeah. And that inspire is the key word. I'm in my sixties, but I don't inspire people. I don't think anyway. I mean, maybe I do people who are 40, who aren't as in good a shape of me might go, wow, if he can do it, I can do it. But the people I'm really talking about that I can't encourage you enough. If you're listening or forward this to a friend who's really overweight, who's obese, Mm -hmm. Because those are the people. Yes. When you walk into the gym for the first time and everyone's looking at you and they are, it's not, it's not a negative thing. They are not looking at you negatively. Mm -hmm. They're looking at you with admiration and they're thinking you're brave. 
and someone else can see that, that person that's overweight, you can change lives just by showing your bravery, by going into the gym and saying, you know what, I'm going to let people see me and I'm going to try and I'm going to try really hard. Mm -hmm. Then someone else is going to do it. You are changing lives when you do that. And I, I can't express how much I appreciate that and how much I love to see it because it is happening. And then you start to get results and then you inspire them even more. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then people, like I said, forward this video, if you're listening to someone who can get in the gym and look, if, if not for yourself, do it for your friends. Do it for other people who are overweight mm -hmm. because you can inspire them. And if you're older, I see older people in there trying really hard who can barely walk. We oh, see yeah. a lot of that in our gyms, you know, trainers helping them and they're trying really hard and they're not giving up. People aren't looking at that person going, look at that old fart, man. He can't even walk. No, they're inspired. Don't you think? Oh, I agree. And, you know, I have even some clients that have some different difficulties and things like that. And, you know, when, when members have come up to them, they're like, hey, you know, you're doing a great job or, you know, gosh, you're in here all the time. Like, it's so positive. So, I mean, even for myself, I wish I had taken that step when I was 260 pounds. I, I didn't have the bravery to come into the gym. And so I understand where people come from. So when you do that, especially now as a trainer, I really see that in the gym, you know, come in, bring your friend in with you. If you have a membership at any, any health club, bring them with you. If you can bring a, you know, a guest or whatnot, just so maybe they're more comfortable even coming in with you. Maybe that will help. But those types of things, when those folks come in here who are clearly uncomfortable, people are definitely noticing, but they're noticing because they're like, that person's doing something about their, you know, overweight, underweight, whatever. And even if you maybe, maybe aren't overweight, underweight, like, you're in the gym, you're doing something, you're here to, um, you know, get healthier, you know, whatever the case might be, that's great. You know, that inspires other people to be here, people in your life that maybe you were never a gym person. I was never a gym person. I started becoming a gym person because I loved it. You know, people thought I was crazy, you know, and then I'm like, no, I just really like it. So other people have that ability to change their minds, their friends, family, Bring them along with your journey, bring them in with you, you know, um, or if you're a person, maybe you don't have friends and family, but, you know, do it for yourself. But when you come in here, just understand to your point, Steve, people aren't staring at you or judging you and in a negative light. They're like, man, that's great that that person's in here. They're really, you know, rooting for you, even if they don't know you. Um, and that's the thing about a gym is it's not the intimidating place that um, is generally portrayed online and different things in a negative way, it's really a positive environment. So it's something really, really good to take that first step, come in here and just, you know, get moving and, and understand, you know, what's available to you and just kind of take that and, and move forward. Yeah. And if you don't have friends and family, when you get into the gym, you're quickly going to have friends. Now and you, family. Do. <laughs> you know, that's a great thing about it, but I just, I can't encourage people enough. Don't be a victim. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to people out there, or doctors that say, you know, uh, fat is a disease. If you're fat, you have a disease. Don't listen to that. Don't fall for the people telling you you're a victim. And don't mm -hmm. be the opposite of a victim. The people that we described, David Fatino working out with oxygen on, and the guy in the wheelchair and the obese people that I see in there all the time, the old people that can barely walk, they're not victims. Mm -mm. They want to accomplish something. They want to get better. The last thing they are thinking is that, oh, I'm a victim. Don't be a victim. It might be hard. It's way harder for some people than it is for others. Right. You know, we talked, look, some people can look at food and gain weight. You know, some people gain weight eating 1500 calories. Is that fair? No, that's not really fair, but you're not a victim. Don't be a victim. Don't be a crybaby. Get in there and figure it out. Figure out what's wrong with your body and inspire other people to do it. 
And what's so exciting about this, which I know I've said two or three times now, but it's so exciting in that how those are the people that can change lives. They can change lives because all those people sitting on the couch or uh, watching you and seeing you get better, you're impressing them and you're going to change their lives, but you got to change yours first. I couldn't agree more. All right, David. So if uh, anyone wants to uh, find you on social media, see what you're doing with your shows and all of that, where do they find you? So they can find me on Instagram at David Wright underscore fitness or for fitness training tips, boot camp, things like that. My new fitness training page is at uh, Wright Fitness Training on Instagram. All right, David. Thanks for being with us. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Steve.